Hello students, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to discuss about two dimensional array. In the last class we discussed about one dimensional array, right? So two dimensional array is nothing but it contains two subscripts. Okay, we all know subscripts. Subs subscripts are nothing but uh, those are used to store the size. Okay. In one dimensional array, the elements are stored in a sequential manner, one after another. Okay. But in two dimensional array, if you want to store the data in a tabular format, we need to use two dimensional array. Okay. So far, we discussed the array variable that can store a list of values. There will be a situations where a table of values will be stored. Okay. So in that cases, we need to use two dimensional array. So in two dimensional array, it contains two subscripts. Okay. One subscript is used to store the row size and another subscript is used to store the column size. So if you consider this table, it contains one, two, three, four, four columns, one, two, three, three rows. So if you want to store the collection of rows and columns, we need to use two dimensional array. Okay. So how to declare the two dimensional array and how to create and how to initialize the two dimensional array. So the syntax is uh, very similar to one dimensional array. Okay. Data type array name. Here it contains two subscripts. In one dimensional array it contains only one subscript. The difference is it contains two subscripts. Okay. So data type array name. Subscripts is uh, subscripts and next array name is equals to new int of Max, maximum rows next to maximum columns so here you need to specify the row size and here you need to specify the column size so this is known as declaration and this is known as creation declaration creation of memory means allocating memory so you can declare uh, you can use these two in short format like data type array name is equals to new data type of row size and column size so consider this example data type array name is equals to new data type of three rows four columns so first subscript is used to represent row size and the second subscript is used to represent the column size okay so three rows four columns memory will be allotted okay so this is known as declaration and creation we created the allocated the memory locations next we need to store the values okay so that is known as initialization initialization is nothing but storing values into memory allocations okay so we can initialize a two dimensional array like this data type array name is equals to values so the data type is in next we need to represent two subscripts a is equals to so this is one row and this is another row and this is another row okay just wait a second yes so three rows four columns right so that's why i'm differentiating i'm separating the rows this is one row second row and third row like this okay the elements are stored in this format 15 20 25 and 30 so this is one row and this is another row and this is another row like this the elements are arranged so in one dimensional array it contain only series series of elements we can represent this is zeroth index this is first index second index third index like that but in two dimensional array the elements are stored in a rows and columns format right so that's why here you need to use two subscript to represent the unique index okay so here the 15 is stored in which row zeroth row in which column zeroth column so that's why array name is a the 15 index value is a of 0 0 okay so first you need to give the index values for row 0 1 2 if it contain another row give 3 and for columns also 0 1 2 3 4 like that okay next for example if you want to represent the 40 index value first you need to see in which row so the row is first row the column is second column so a of 1 2 okay so if you want to represent 65 it is rep it is presented in second row 
first column you have 2 1 okay next 80 second row third column okay so first subscript is row second subscript is column okay like that you need to represent this is 0th row first row second row 0th column first column second column and third column like that okay let me show you the example program so this is the example program public static void main int so this is the main method next data type array name so here i am specifying the values okay i already said that no need to declare no need to create so we can declare and uh, initialize the values at initialization time okay so this is the best method to store values in arrays so here it contain declaration creation and initialization all in one line only. all in one line only okay so the elements are stored i want to display the elements okay so what is the index value for this element my array of 0 0 right why because array name is my array and it is presented in 0th row 0th column okay so for that purpose i am using for loop okay why because i want to display all the elements not only one element if you want to display one element you can mention my array of 0 0 it will display only one element but i want to display all the elements so that's why i am using for loop okay so if you observe the for loop contain inside another for loop okay this is known as a nested for loop okay the for loop which contain inside another for loop that is known as nested for loop so here i value is 0 0 less than 3 here you need to mention the row size and here you need to mention the column size rows are 3 columns are 4 so 0 less than 3 is true so next it will go to inside the loop j value is 0 0 less than 4 is true next it will go to inside the loop i value is 0 j value is 0 so 0th row 0th column the element 15 is presented so it will be displayed okay after that whether i is incremented or j so absolutely j value is incremented why because here the for loop is used to check the condition if the condition is true then it go to inside the loop okay when it will come out from the loop if the condition is false okay here the condition is true so that's why it will increment this value up to until this condition is false okay so after this condition is false it will go to increment i value now j value is incremented to 1 1 less than 4 is true okay i value is not changed i value is 0 okay j value is now 1 so 0 a, uh, 0 row and first column 20 is displayed next j value is incremented to 2 okay i said that this until the condition is false this loop will be executed okay next 0 row second column 25 and next 30 next j value is incremented to 4 4 less than 4 condition is false so that's why i value is incremented now i value is 1 okay 1 less than 3 is true next it will go to inside loop j value now 0 okay first row 0th column first row 0th column 20 first row first first row second column 30 first row third column 40 like that all elements will be incremented so i hope you you can you have understand this okay yes let me execute this program yes next we need to run this program java class name is also same yes it will display all the elements if you want to uh, display only one particular element you can represent this row size and column row index value and column index value 
आई होप इट इज़ क्लियर इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट्स रिगार्डिंग टू दिस वीडियो प्लीज़ कमेंट मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन फॉर मोर वीडियोज़ प्लीज़ डू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल थैंक यू